Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Line Change, the NHL betting podcast from the Action Network. My name is Michael Leboff, and joining me, as always, is Nick Martin. And Nick, uh, we got through the Frozen Frenzy. We're going to get through the Wednesday night with just one game, and things get a little bit more normalized on Thursday with a nine-game slate. Uh, so we'll start off with our favorite underdogs. I'm going to go first because um, I, I like a, the biggest dog on the slate, actually. I think the Sharks are close enough, uh, and we'll get to a point where uh, the rain, we'll get in range for a bet here. Um, yeah, it's ugly for San Jose. They look pretty abject. They're as high as plus 260. Uh, but the, it really comes down to the Kings. I just think there's enough ways the Kings can lose this game um, to make this number viable for a bet. Uh, the We saw – we both liked the Kings against the Knights. It didn't go well. Big save Dave wasn't at his best. Um, but uh, that's one of the reasons I think this is an okay bet here on the 0-5-2 and two San Jose Sharks who have a negative 16 goal difference. Only Only three goals worse than Edmonton. Uh, but uh, it's you can see a poor goaltending performance. You can see an, a night where the Kings just don't score enough as they can be an offensively challenged team. They're averaging just north of three goals per game right now. Um, this is also their home opener after seven games on the road. Uh, and like the Sharks have been woeful, but you'd imagine that they can't be playing this bad forever. So I just think at plus 260 with this thing starting to to climb and I wouldn't be shocked if it gets bigger. I, I like San Jose as an underdog. Um, and it's not just because our favorite sharks listener fan listener, Javier Jose was mad at us for how we just glossed over sharks and ducks the other day, but perhaps that weighs a little bit into the number. I do like uh, the sharks as an underdog um, to kick things off. Yeah. The one thing that I'll throw out there just to add on the sharks and make sure we get some comments here, their top line's been pretty damn good in the prop markets and they have, Nobody else put out there. And William Eklund, Eklund is a player I was high on when he came into the league. He's been playing pretty well and getting a lot of consistent minutes. He was still out there at around plus 130 to record three shots um, in the Anaheim game. And the Kings are a tough matchup for uh, for opposing shooters, for sure. But I'm hoping that that'll keep that number out there around the same. As uh, our regular listeners know, we record this the day before, so shop prop markets aren't out. But if that holds close to where it has been, I think that that'll be another underdog bet I'll throw out there because it should be better than any money on this game. So I do like that. Um, before I go into my underdog here, I was hoping to get a bit of a better number on the win on the Seattle Kraken here because I kind of think this is going to be one of these spots where the Jets let down. Maybe people push the number where I want it to go, but it's hard to say because I think a lot of sharper betters are probably fairly impressed with the way the Kraken have looked. Um, I lost on them last night. It was one of the bad side calls I had, but I thought you could see a lot of the positives in their game, especially early on. They could have been up two or three goals after the first, and then the Avs found their game. Uh, and credit to the Avs who are starting to look better. But I think what the Kraken have done so far has been pretty impressive. This looks like a bit of a letdown spot for me with the Jets, who've been, like, they're always really good in 50-50 type games. They don't need to own much of the overall run of play to fare well, obviously, with Hellebuck. But their underlying numbers are pretty middling. So I think this is one of those ones where they're favored on the road, but I actually feel kind of confident the Kraken can carry more of the play. So yeah, like I said, I'm not huge on the number at plus 115, but I do feel like it's a good underdog to mix in on this slate. And at, at most I'll say, like, I think a lot of people are going to be looking at the Jets here as like a slam dunk and then be surprised if they lose and are 7-1. And I kind of feel like this is the one. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Buffalo last night versus the Stars. I feel like it's that kind of a spot. So yeah, I like the Seattle Kraken as my underdog. Yeah, I, I like the Kraken too. I was tempted to make to make them my best bet, but when I saw you came in on the underdog, I fi figured we'll just leave it there and not double down on it. Um, I like Seattle too. I, I I'm very impressed with Winnipeg just because we kind of go through the song and dance with them year after year, where it's like they have a good season, then everyone's like, ah, they're not gonna be able to do it again, and then they do it again, and it's it's impressive. And um, so hats off to them. But like you said, I don't, I just don't think that they're the hot start warrants them to be a, a road favorite against a, a team that has played well. Right? It's not like the, if the Kraken were struggling, sure, but they're not, as you said. Yeah, and sometimes uh, sharks and Kraken. 
I was just gonna say it's such a back and forth league. Like I think sometimes you gotta like kind of reach a little on the spots that you like, like for some of these teams. And I do, so I feel like I'm kind of there on this one where maybe I was hoping the Kraken might be like plus one twenty five, but I don't really want to go off my read that this could be the Jets letdown game and that I feel good about the way the Kraken are playing. So let's go with that. Okay. Um, let's get into the big board then. Uh, we'll start with the Rangers and Panthers, a Eastern conference final rematch in Manhattan. Uh, Panthers sitting plus 125 right now. Rangers minus 150. The total six and a half. Uh, New York is one of three teams in the NHL without a regulation loss. The Jets are the only team without a loss at all. Um, the Flames are the only other team without a regulation loss. Uh, they're storming teams, the Rangers are. I I do think the schedule has been favorable for them, but it's not. that's not a criticism. It's just a, a note. Um, so maybe like their numbers are inflated a tad, but it shouldn't take anything away. And it's also um, their 5-on-5 five five play looks really really crisp though and the thing to note here is that they're getting um they're not getting the florida panthers at their the peak of their powers right the goaltending's been really poor uh the defensive numbers aren't great yet um sasha barkov is still out of the lineup and i think maurice is still trying to just figure out what the right mix is for this group uh, we do expect them to trend up so honestly it, and i don't think minus 150 is a terrible price on the Rangers considering the like forces at work here. Um, the, the Rangers have been much better than Florida out of the gates. So if, if you kind of just put away the pedigree conversation, which you can weigh as much as you want, I do think the number makes sense. And um, as long as it's just Sturking and goal, like I, I don't, I wouldn't talk anyone off of uh, fading Florida in this rematch. Yeah, I agree. I feel like this is kind of the theme of the episode for for me, at least here. There's a couple teams that are right around this minus 150 range that I was really pumped to bet, but they opened, you know, they're all kind of slightly more obvious than I had hoped. But I still like the Rangers here. Like you said, they've been playing really well. They're getting like that third line has been one of the very best lines in the league. And that's made their overall even strength process a lot better. You outlined with the Panthers. I think that they could just be a team that kind of lulls in the early going. They are playing without one of the league's very best players, obviously, so you have to give them that excuse, but they will be without him again in this game. They lost Montour. They lost, I think it was nine players from the Cup team altogether, counting guys that were like in and out of the lineup and and counting Barkov. So it's not quite the group that won the Cup by any means right now. And I think they've been somewhat unimpressive. I feel like you know that they're going to be up for this game and make it tough and, you know, bring a pretty sharp effort, but I still feel pretty confident that this is like a reasonable spot to take on the Rangers. So, yeah, I'm right with you here. I think it's definitely the Rangers or nothing. Uh I think you can make a similar case for the Devils against the Red Wings. Um the Devils on the road here though. Detroit plus 125 at home. Devils minus 150, total six and a half. So it's the exact same odds just the with the road team favored here. Um, ugly game for the Devils against the Lightning. Just really ugly. They've had a couple duds, um, but I think just generally as a whole, don't mind what we're seeing from New Jersey when you think of the the season as a big picture rather than just what we've seen from them through the first couple weeks, um, which is that they've still got a new coach that they're getting used to. They were a team that really struggled last year, so they have and then they got saddled with pretty high expectations. They a new goalie in, uh, behind a defense that has been banged up already. Uh, Brett Pesci and Luke Hughes are looking closer to being ready. Um, so I just think that the Devils, they're going to be a little bit more inconsistent than perhaps like a divisional favorite preseason would, would like to be, especially in the early going. But that doesn't mean to like hop off them. And then on the other side, the Red Wings just haven't really impressed yet uh, they get the one nothing win against the islanders in what was probably going to be the most unique um result of maybe the entire season with the red wings recording 10 shots on goal um i do think the islanders got a little bit too much credit for for out shooting them the way they did i don't think the islanders made like life incredibly difficult for alex lyon uh, but he pitches a shutout in, in a what was a ice the ice was tilted against the red wings so it's not like you can build off of anything from that game um so, yeah, I, I actually 
think the Devils as a minus 150 road favorite here would make much more sense than the Red Wings uh, would. Yeah, I'm I'm betting the Devils here at the current price. I'd play them to minus 160. I think that, like you said, Detroit has looked pretty unimpressive. And I think the Devils specifically are a pretty good matchup to give them some problems. they got two lines that can really skate and have plenty of skill. So I think when you look at that second pairing of Sherratt and Petrie, I wouldn't be surprised to see them get exposed at some point in this game. And I think the flaws that everyone kind of expected from the wings are coming to fruition. Like, I think you just, when you have a guy like Tarasenko and Kane on each line, or however they're going to do it, but those two both in the top six aren't going to help you own much of the even strength play. So I kind of think they're always just going to be susceptible. Like, they're always going to be a team that gives up their share of chances, doesn't own a lot of the play. And the Devils, they've been kind of hit or miss. Like, to me, they kind of look like they have that Colorado vibe when they where when they're on and they're really possessing the puck and everything's in rhythm, they look unstoppable. And when it's bad, like it was versus Tampa, it's bad. But the other thing is that Tampa game, obviously they had Jake Allen in and he didn't play great. Obviously the Devils didn't deserve to win that one, but now they should have Markstrom in this one, who's one of the biggest reasons why, you know, they're being priced as like a cup favorite this season. So yeah, I like the Devils here. I think that they, uh, I feel pretty confident that they can bounce back and take advantage of some of Detroit's flaws. Next up, Blues and Leafs. Uh, St. Louis plus 184. Toronto minus 225. Total six and a half. A lot of talk about money going to be on the board because it's Craig Berube's former team. Uh, but the real story here is that Robert Thomas is going to be on the shelf for six weeks for St. Louis, which really changes their outlook um will make them more even more dependent on getting good goaltending from Hofer and uh, Bennington that said um I do wonder if the Leafs and they've been really good but I do wonder if, if we'll see like the, the numbers be a little skewed based off their start and I know they did just lose to Columbus um so maybe we, we already seen a bit but that was with Hilda being goal um and on a back-to-back so I I know nothing yet here I think I think the one angle I might look at is uh, Braden Shen to score. He's getting a lot of shots, and he's going to have a bigger, um, more opportunity with uh, Robert Thomas out of the lineup. So Shen, to me, would be the one guy I'd maybe circle uh, for St. Louis. Who uh, I'm tempted by the price on the Blues, but it's just not there yet. Yes, I, I, that open, I actually like the Leafs here. I like the Shen look. He bumped to the top power play at yesterday's practice. We'll see um, if Jake Neighbors ends up sitting too. The other guy I kind of had circled is Texier. I still think he has some offensive upside, and he's going to bump onto... He skated with Buchanovich and Cairo. And yep. looking at the Blues lines in this game, they're going to be pretty reliant on that unit. So, yeah, it really sucks for them that they lost Rob Thomas. And I think that... Uh, the Leafs, I don't know, like they've been so bad in these spots where they're around like minus 20, 220. I know a lot of people, like if you run it in the action bet labs, they've been had a horrible ROI in those spots for like three seasons. They also have a really good ROI after a loss, though, after regulation yeah. losses for like three seasons. Toronto's been one of the better teams in the league at bouncing back and ending it there. So, yeah, the current prices, I'm kind of uneven, but I think if you wanted to circle in on those, uh, props on the St. Louis side of things where they should be moving into some pretty increased roles. I wouldn't even hate just going with Cairo either. Like he's played so good this season. He's going to play huge minutes in this game. He'll be up for it. Obviously. Like, I think you don't want to go too far down that line, but everyone talks about how it's money on the board for the Leafs and they really want this game. But you think about the way things ended with Cairo and Barube. I do feel like, you know, he's going to also bring his best effort and, really try to drag his team to win here. And and it's not like you're just reaching because he's looked excellent this season. Been one of the reasons that the Blues do have the record that they do have. Yeah, that's not a bad call, call either. Um, Minnesota and Tampa up next. Uh, Minnesota staying in Florida doing the two-step, taking on the Bolts who were playing their third and four nights. Um, Tampa's minus 150. Minnesota's plus 125. Total six and a half. So basically the same price as what we were talking about with Florida and um, Minnesota the other night. I think that makes some sense. Uh, but in, in a, a lot of it is going to come down to the goaltending for Minnesota. We'll see if this is a Marc-Andre Fleury start uh, for the Wild. I I do think, um, you know, the Wild have played 
really well and, and deserve um, the they'll deserve the attention that they get at this kind of price, even against a, a Tampa team that honestly you were just talking about the Devils fin- filling into that bucket with the Avalanche. And in, I'm not saying this stylistically; it's the same way, but I think you can say the same thing about the Lightning that they're just going to have some nights where they look unbeatable, and then they're going to have nights where things just aren't clicking. Maybe Kucherov isn't at his best, and uh, Vasilevsky, you know, can't play to his ceiling and and it looks really really bad and i think that's what we'll we'll see from from tampa as well like it's a it's going to be a pretty low floor high ceiling type team so um yeah i think minnesota plus 125 is the right side we'll just wait to see what the goaltending how the goaltending shakes out yeah i'm right with you I'm, i'd be happy to get the wild at the same price we got them in florida but i also think the gap between gustafson and flurry this season could prove to be pretty gigantic so I am just kind of hoping that we'll get the same number after goalie confirmations and then take a shot on the wild again in what I'm sure will probably end up being a closer game than that one. I, as a wild backer, didn't expect that one to be a blowout at all. So we'll take it. But I I continue to think the way the wild are playing, like they're just going to be so live at this kind of numbers. They've allowed among the least chances in the entire league. And Gustafsson's been one of the best goalies in the entire league. And we left him out of the futures we hadn't seen last night's game. But he was still out there. I, know, I was just thinking one. that. Yeah, last night. Yeah. And the thing about that that I like is I think the Wild will be probably not the best defensive team in the league this year, which is what they've been so far, but a really good defensive team. And you like it's easy to forget that Gustafsson was um, like in the Vesna race the year before last when everything didn't go wrong in Minnesota. Right. So it's not like you're just completely reaching on like his strong start. You're kind of just reaching that he's closer to the goalie he was that season. So do you think that's also a, a solid sprinkle on the wild right now? Your boy, John Hines as well. Keep an eye out. I know. Uh, I had that thought. <laughs> that, that's the one thing that sucks about their start. Cause I don't have that at all, but hopefully they'll slow down just enough that he doesn't stay in the Jack Adams race. Okay. Before we get to best bets, we'll do Colorado and Utah. Avs minus 134, Utah plus 112. Uh, this one is in Salt Lake City. Total of six and a half. Um, the Utah Hockey Club were dealt some devastating news with their defense, with um, Sean Dursey's out for perhaps a whole season. John Marino's already been out. He's going to be out for three to four months. Uh, so what was looking like a pretty sh- like a strength coming into the season is now a pretty big question mark. They're calling up Maverick Lamaru um, from the AHL. He was a first round pick a couple years ago. Um, so with Colorado getting back into like their swing, or at the very least, just putting some results on the board, including um, last night against the Kraken, it does feel like they they can probably expose this Utah team if they get what they if they show up as you were saying, like and they're the good version of themselves. Uh, we could see Utah have some issues uh, slowing them down. And, and Utah was not at the races against Ottawa the other night. So I think Colorado at minus 135 or better is fine. Yeah, I agree. I'm kind of right with you, tempted by the Avs here. They, It just feels like one of these things, if you can, if you eliminate the start a little bit when you know the Avs were playing without Devin Taves, who came back for that Kraken game and looked really good. I think he's one of the absolute best defensemen in the league and should mean a lot to every money line that he's involved in. Um, and then you look at like the Utah side of things. It sucks for our, the hockey club. I hope they trade to bring in a D man for our, both our futures and just to see them continue to compete this year. Because right now, it does look pretty thin. They went from having a blue line that projected to be pretty good to one that looks average or below average. And I think the Abs are finding their form, uh, especially if that top pairing. Because that's the thing. Some of those early games, Makar wasn't really playing his best defensively, and. It looks like he's kind of found his game on that front, and I'm sure a big part of that will be him playing with Taves the rest of the way here. So I I don't mind the avalanche at all. I feel like this number almost could be bigger if, you know, we had seen more of a sample of the abs with Taves in there and more of a sample of the crack or the hockey club without their guys on the back end. Okay, Uh, let's get into our best bets then. Uh, You can go first. Yeah, so I am settling on fading the Calgary Flames again. The number's already moving, but I still like Carolina at minus 160 here. It's another one where I just feel like Calgary's start 
where they've clearly gotten the most out of every possible player. So credit to them. They've been very inspired is just holding this number up a little bigger than I think it might be. And I feel like this was the one where they're due to take a loss. I think that the Penguins were the better team uh, for about 50 minutes of that game. The other night, obviously a tough beat to take for myself. And well, like what we've seen from Carolina, I think has been more or less what you'd expect. Like they played quite well versus the Oilers last night. I feel like they absolutely dominated the Penguins, felt fine about their, their game that they lost versus the Blues. And I think this could be a thing in like a month. The Hurricanes just like a, look like a complete juggernaut once again. So I like the spot. I think uh, the Flames are just playing a little above their heads. It started to show last game, even though they ended up getting the win. And they've got an incredible goaltending, which who knows how that'll hold up in a, uh, over a larger sample. This one should be Dan Bladar. They've been pretty consistent with splitting the starts. So yeah, I just think that this number looks... Like even at minus 160, I kind of think this could be a thing in like two months when the flames come down to earth a little bit. That number actually was kind of short. My best bet will come in on the stars uh, as a minus 120 favorite in Boston. The Bruins, even money, total five and a half. I think when you're looking to bet against the Bruins, one thing you always want to note is if the goaltending disparity is going to be such that it makes it almost a, a fool's errand. And in this situation, it shouldn't be. As long as it's uh, Jake Ottinger, the Bruins, but that's just part of the problem, right? The Bruins have just not been very good. We we like that Nashville number against Boston on Tuesday night. That one came through um, and the Bruins struggles continued. They're now 3-3-1 and one on the season, but it's the, the defensive numbers and the structure that's just kind of abandoned them. That's really concerning if you are a Bruins backer uh, in any form. So I'm happy to keep taking them on. I do think they're just getting too much credit for what they've done in seasons past and just the, the Bruins tax being baked into the number a little bit. Meanwhile, the stars um, they've lost a couple uh, recently, but they got off to a great start and we do just expect them to be one of the uh, very best in the league. So I think that this number is more than okay on Dallas at, at minus minus one twenty. Um, I just think they're much better than Boston at this very moment. Yeah, I'm right with you. I like this bet as well. I think that the Stars are going to prove to be a way bigger team. We've talked a lot on this show about how I'm pretty low on Boston, and they've looked pretty bad. And you talk about like how their structures look a little off, but I think part of the problem is they just don't have the guys to own that much of the play. Like I really just don't think this is that talented of a team anymore. The offense is pretty thin. They rank 29th in expected goals for percentage. And it, like even the wins, it's been kind of the recipe we've seen from the Bruins in the past where it's just hanging on trying to get good goaltending and win close, but they've never really looked like world beaters in any of their games this season. Um, so I think this kind of a number versus the stars is reasonable. Like the, the Bruins are getting outshot by five every game. And then the other thing that I'll throw out there is like, this is a potential Corpus Allo start. I wouldn't say like, I wouldn't bet on it, but it's one of those things. Like I think the number is already good enough. So you might also luck in, if you can walk in like a minus minus one twenty, you might luck into a, Corpus Allo start and then all of a sudden you've got a ton of value on that so I like those spots where you know well, you can try to get a number you're happy with and then you can get, it ends up being a number that's great if you catch the backup yeah well Corpus Allo to some people is a Vezina trophy contender before the season started so just remember that before you bet it um, okay that does it for this week on line change uh, just to recap the underdogs, unfortunately, one of them was the Sharks. The other one came in on the uh, Seattle Kraken. Best bets for us. Uh, you like the Carolina Hurricanes as a road favorite in Calgary. And I took the Dallas Stars as a road favorite in Boston. Thank you for listening, rating, reviewing, subscribing. If you've done that, please do. Uh, if you haven't done it, please do so. It does help us. Uh, thank you to our producers, Noah and Dave, on the back end. Uh, we'll see you next week. 